Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's a very important. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. We would call it like a yardstick today. And the angel stood saying, Rise, get up, and measure the temple of God. Now, according to the, to the date given in this Bible, which they know the dates better than I do, it's A.D. 96. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D. There is no temple. Especially at the writing, if this is A.D. 96. We're not, we have not gone back into the future. We have not gone to Herod's temple where Jesus walked. We're not in Solomon's temple. That's been destroyed by the Babylonians. <clears throat> so we learn from the book of Revelation, a book of prophecy. The temple's coming back. It's going to be a physical temple that can be measured. It can be seen. The temple of God. Notice the temple of God. Because we learn that Satan is going to be taking that seat. Where Satan's seat is, he spoke to the churches. And the altar. And them that worship therein. In the tribulation period, the Jews will go to their temple. They will be there and they will do the law. There it is. The law, the temple, the sacrifices are back. In the future. But the court. <clears throat> which is without the temple. It means outside the temple. Now again. Herod's temple was destroyed in 70 AD. This is a future. The date is 96 AD. According to the, to the people that know better than I do. Uh, it could be plus or minus. It doesn't have to be exactly. Nice, but the temple has gone. So the court. Which is out the temple. There's the temple, and the court is away from the temple. Um, the court. Herod's had four courts. The priests, Israel, the women, and the Gentiles. Solomon had two. The priests and the Gentiles. The tabernacle in the wilderness had one court. And that's where the brazen altar and the laborers were. So, the court that's without the temple, leave it out. Don't measure it. And measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. Well, we saw that in Herod, and we saw that in Solomon. There's a place where the Gentiles have. And the holy city, Jerusalem, shall they tread, walk, under four, underfoot, forty and two months, three and a half years. And you can see that in Luke 21, 24. This holy city is going to be trampled by Gentiles again. It happened in 70 AD and it happened in Babylon. So it's the times of the Gentiles. The end of the 42 months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Uh-oh. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth, very uncomfortable clothing. 
1,203 score days is 42 months, three and a half years. That's a long, long ministry. These are the two olive trees, the two witnesses, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Well, that's an interesting. Now let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 30. Luke chapter 9, verse 30. Luke 9, verse 30. And behold, there taught with him Jesus two men, which were Moses and Elias, which was Elijah. The New, New Testament name given to Elijah, to the Greek. So these are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. They were standing before Jesus Christ. We know God is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is God. We know that. The Law and the Prophets. When Peter woke up on that Mount Transfiguration, he saw them more than just three men talking. Now, let's go to Zechariah 4, verse 2. Just before Malachi. Zechariah 4, I said 2. 4, 2. And said unto me, what was verse 1? And the angel that talked with me, uh-oh, there was an angel that talked to John. Could it be the same? And walked, anyway, and wake me as a man that waketh out of sleep. And said to me, What seest thou? And I said, I, I look, and behold a candlestick of gold, with a bowl on the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon. Seven lamps. And seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. It's a candlestick. It's got seven leaves. Seven pipes. One candlestick. And two olive trees. Well, olive oil was used for the fuel of the candlestick in the tabernacle. The two olive trees. Here's two olive trees. By it. The, the lamps. One upon the right side of the bowl. And the other upon the left side thereof. So I answer respect to the angel that talked to me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Title respect, Lord. The angel that talked with me answered, said unto me, Knowest not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Does that sound familiar? You know who those people are? No, I don't know who they are. And he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay, we're not done yet. We're not done. Let's go to Revelation 4, 5. Revelation 4, 5. Let's see something really interesting here. And out of the throne perceived lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Which are the seven spirits of God. Well, we already seen that we've seen Jesus Christ is in the midst of them. Well, who's been standing, who stood before Jesus Christ before? Moses and Elijah. Who is these, these burning lights? Moses and Elijah. Who is John seeing when he comes up to that throne of God? He's seeing God. He's seeing Jesus. He's seeing Moses and Elijah, the four and twenty-four elders, and the beasts, the four beasts. So you can safely assume that of the four and twenty-four elders, none of them are Moses and Elijah. They've got their own position standing before God as a light, as an oil tree that continuously feeds that light of the prophets and the law, which also stood before Jesus Christ speaking about his decease. 
Has everything been done and completed? Yes. Now, is this really Moses and Elijah? Let's go to Malachi chapter 4. The last book of the Old Testament in the King James Bible. Malachi 4.1 Bible with Bible, Scripture with Scripture, King James Bible, you can't fail. Other Bibles may fail, you know. I don't study other Bibles that much. This particular book. What we read right now may not be in a modern Bible. You would Ruth, you would, if that's the case, you would ruin the cross reference. So, verse 1 For behold, the day cometh, and shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Definitely. Then cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Matthew 3, 9 through 12. The wicked are burnt up. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, capital S, Jesus Christ, of righteousness, the second advent, arise with healing in his wings. The Jews, Hosea 6, 1 through 3. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall in the millennium. Ye shall tread down the wicked, second advent, and they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in, in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, that fire issues out of Jesus' eyes. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, there's the law, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, Exodus 20, for all Israel, time of Jacob's trouble, never Gentile. Moses is the one that gave us that tabernacle. And the statutes and judgments, that's the law. They're coming back. I wonder if Moses is going to bring that law again. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. There's the prophets. The law and the prophets. Before the coming of that great and dreadful day of the Lord. So before Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent, Elijah is going to show up. Well, guess who just showed up in Revelation? We're going to see more that this is Moses and Elijah. So there they are. There's Moses and Elijah. There's the law of the prophet. They stood before Jesus before his death. They're going to stand before his coming. Back to Revelation 11. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees. Olives, the type of the oil, is the type of Holy Spirit. And two candlesticks, light, standing before God of the earth. We know Moses stood before God because his face was changed. I don't know if Elijah ever met God face to face. But he was raptured. He was taken up in the chariots of fire and brought to heaven. Okay. Back to the tribulation. If any man will hurt them hurt there will be people that will do hurt to Moses and Elijah will hurt them that's what the word says fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies Ooh, bad breath heartburn you hurt these two and you're, you're, you're flamed up you will die by fire and then you'll go off into the into hell, which is fire, then off to eternity in the lake of fire. Now this is this part. And we read previously that when the sixth trumpet was open, fire, smoke, and brimstones were out of those horsemen. Fire is a theme of the tribulation period.
The fire proceeded out of their mouth. That would be something to see. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. The fire will kill them. If they hurt Moses and Elijah. You better not hurt them. And they don't put no degrees on what kind of hurt. This says hurt. I wouldn't poke them too hard. Ah! You're dead. I'd be very careful around these two. All right. More. These have power to shut heaven. 1 Kings 17, 1. James 5, 17. That it rained not in the days of their prophecy. They're going to prophesy. Jesus is coming. All right, so who in the Bible had power to shut the heaven? According to James. According to 1 King. Elijah. So he's coming back to do what he did before. And if you read the Bible, it says that, I mean, there's a widow woman going out. There was so much no food, if I could say it like that. She gathered two sticks, two sticks. That's all she needed to make what she had left for her son and her to die. That was caused by Elijah. Ahab was highly angry with Elijah. So I think we can safely say we know who Elijah is here. And Jesus spoke about John the Baptist being Elijah had the nation accepted him. You get what's going on here? John the Baptist never became Elijah before that coming and great dreadful day. Here now, here is Elijah. He's not named now. So there are Jews who are receiving Christ because here is Elijah named. They're doing a lot better than they did the first Advent. And have power over waters, Exodus 7, 19, to turn them to blood. Now who did that? Moses. There they are. 7, 19. So, do we think we know who these two guys are? I think we do. So you can prophesy today and say, listen, Moses and Elijah are talking to a Jewish person. Hey, they're coming back if you don't get right with Jesus today. And watch this. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Then Moses smite Egypt with all kinds of plagues. There he is. There's his office. And to be at their will. I can just see Moses. I don't know what's going to happen. But I can see Moses and Elijah just having a field day. What do you want to do today, Moses? Oh, let's call them locusts. Ah, that was cool. Hey, watch this. Let's call down fire from the sky. This is not the meek Moses. This is not the frightened Elijah that... that Jezebel with her makeup on her face it, it scared them and when they have when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them there's another war how much power does Moses and Elijah have the beast is going, not a battle, not a fight, not a boxing wing. He's going to make war. Check that in your dictionary. Against them. And shall overcome them and kill them. Well, Moses is going to die twice. Elijah, he's going to die once. Moses already tasted death. Elijah, he's going to taste death here. And their dead bodies. Now Moses' body, according to Jude, was, was snatched by Michael. And Satan got angry. Elijah's body went up in the chariot. The horse was a fire. He didn't die. 
and their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. That's where you want to go for the holy city? said holy city, verse, was it one? Now it's called Sodom and Egypt. What did Jesus say? Remember Lot's wife? What was Moses doing? Hey, he's doing everything he did. He did in Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified outside of Jerusalem. That's where he was crucified. So possibly Moses and Elijah's body are not going to be in the city. They're going to be outside the city like Christ. And it may, if it is the city or if it's outside like Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews, outside the holy city, which we're not to count the court of the Gentiles, it's given a specific name of Sodom and Egypt. Okay. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, Jews and Gentiles, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half not three days and three nights three and a half days and we all remember what martha said lord it's four days he stinketh i don't know if three and a half days they start corrupting but we know in four days martha told us it stinks jesus three days and three nights and he didn't see corruption Their bodies are in the street, on the street. Well, at least Jesus' body was buried by people who loved him. John of Armenia, uh, Nicodemus brought him some spices. So with that in account, it looks like that no one's going to like Moses and no one's going to like Elijah by what we're going to read next. No one has come up with a way to bury these by. They're dead. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. You got to say one thing about Jesus. At least there was two people that loved him. And one guy gave him his tomb. Not for Moses. Now remember, Moses is the man of all the mans of the Sanhedrin and of the Pharisees. Scribe. Well, you know, we sit in Moses' seat. And they don't even care. His body is lying dead on the ground. Which is the Oriental people and all those people over there in the Middle East. That's a bad thing to leave a grave unburied. A body. Three days and it put in grave. And they that dwell upon the earth. Earth. The whole entire world. He's got the whole world. In his hands, the entire earth. Worldwide. Shall rejoice over them. Dead. Hey, they're dead. Hallelujah. Oh, can't say that. And make merry. And shall send gifts one to another. Merry Christmas. It's in the Bible. And the merrymaking and the gift given is not to baby Jesus. It's two of God's prophets that stand before him. They're dead in the street. Two, my friend, from me, enjoy, have a happy holiday. What's the holiday? These two men are dead. There you go. Shall make merry and send gift. Isn't it great that the gift giving time of the world is when you say Merry Christmas? One to another. Because these two prophets, two prophets, and they upset the whole world, tormented them that dwell on the earth. Whoa. No wonder no one buries their body. They hate them. And these people will wake up in hell being tormented in torments according to the rich man in hell. They're tormenting the people with preaching and prophesying. They're tormenting the people with no rain. They're tormenting the people with what water we have is now blood. And we're sending all kinds of plagues throughout the land. That is the torment. 
We've already had what? Seven seals. We've had six trumpets. We've had one woe. And Moses and Elijah are at it now. Do you really think you want to be in this? Do you think you stockpile your food is going to help you? I can see a Jehovah Witness walking up to these guys. I can see what these guys are going to do to Jehovah Witnesses. I mean the false ones. I don't mean the true 144,000. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them now look how that's written like it just happened it's written like hey it just happened today as john is reporting it it doesn't say it will it you know it happened it is prophecy that's going to be fulfilled do you believe it i believe this just as much as the lord's going to call me on I believe it's just as much absent from the body, present with the Lord. I believe it's just as much as Revelation 20, my tears will be wiped away. Entering them, and they stood upon their feet. Oh. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. Now at this point, this rapture, the earth hears them. I have no idea when, when the church is raptured if they're going to hear God say, come up hither. Let's, let's go back to chapter 4, verse 1. Let's see what the words are. 4, 1. After the seventh church, and I behold, and after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither. Now that voice was talking to John himself. Which means if I'm in the grave or I'm walking somewhere, and the rapture happens, I'm going to hear my voice as much as being here, here. Come up hither. Now, how do you know this is not the church rapture? Those that are dead shall rise first. That's 2 Thessalonians 4, right? Did anybody die here? Yeah, they died, but they were resurrected to be raptured. Paul is not going to be resurrected. Peter is not going to be resurrected. Your dead family that were saved are not going to be resurrected and walk on the planet and then get raptured. They're going right to the clouds where we will meet them. Moses and Elijah stand on their feet alive, and then God says, Come up hither, and everyone hears. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. And tenth part of the city fell, Jerusalem. Lay out, sit, lay out Jerusalem in ten parts. I don't know if they're equal parts, but ten parts. Try it just lay it out in ten different ways and then shade in one area and an earthquake is going to rip that apart do you know when there was another earthquake that was remarkably in Jerusalem when Christ died the Bible spoke of an earthquake earthquakes are frequent they are in the Bible and Israel has had an earthquake but this one's going to destroy a tenth of the city and in the earthquake shall slain, or were slain of men, seven thousand. Now, what do I believe? I believe it will be not six thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. I do not believe it will be seven thousand one. I believe when this earthquake kills people, it will be exactly seven thousand men. You see what kind of power God has? God, look at this God of prophecy. Now, there could have been many ways Jesus could have been killed without having a bone broken of him. And 
And yet, here is one Pacific prophecy about a Pacific number of men that are going to die by a earthquake in one Pacific city of all the cities of the world. Now, see how exact God is on prophecy? Try that with Buddha. Try that with Muhammad. Try that with Joseph Smith. It ain't going to happen. Try that with anybody that does any kind of fortune. I poke my head at the fortune tellers booth here in Daytona Beach. Hey, did you know I was coming? And they get mad at me. Well, you should know I'm coming. You know the future. Okay. And the remnant. Because that's an interesting word. Because that usually refers to Israel. The remnant. Were affrighted. And gave glory to God of heaven. So we see something now turning. We start seeing now, after the three and a half years of Moses and Elijah, we start seeing Jews getting right. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quick. Oh, wait a minute, that's only two woes? We haven't even finished the trumpets. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, "The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of His Christ, and He shall reign for ever and ever." There's one thing we can get with these seven, seven seals, seven seven trumpets. They do show up and show the marks of the end of the tribulation period. One of them said the sun's going to go completely dark, the moon's going to go completely dark, and then the Lord's going to come. Now we see hey, the Lord's come in the millennium. Like I said, I don't know how to lay out the seals, the trumpets, the vials, and the woes if they go in a specific order, but the seven, the last one, they do show it's the end of the tribulation period. That's one thing you can see. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God, sat before God, on their seats. So there's 24 seats in front of God. Look at the things you know about heaven. You want to stop out in front of any Baptist church, pick ten of them out of the nation, and as they come out and say, excuse me, can you tell me what's going on right now in front of the throne of God? Of all the things we've seen, the beast. Moses and Elijah, the four and twenty-four elders, you think they'll be able to tell you? Fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God. I wonder who these men are. Which are and what was and art to come. Here's more. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry. G Gentiles. Go preach on the street. Go knock on people's doors and see how loving they are to you. And thy wrath is come. Second advent. In the time of the dead. That they should be judged. Revelation 20. And that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets. Revelation 20. If their names are in the Lamb's Book of Life, they go in. Not everybody at the great white throne judgment is going to the lake of fire. It said the books were open. If their name was found in the Lamb's Book of Life, then they go in. And God's going to reward them. You think God would be God would be injustice to give Esther, to give Nahum, to give Ezra, to give Nehemiah, to give Aaron, to give those people in the Bible no rewards, and then to hand rewards out to people in the church age. Ruth will be rewarded by God for her faithfulness. Samuel will be rewarded for his faithfulness. But they will not appear at the judgment seat of Christ. 
And Daniel says that they God appeared before God in judgment. For uh, I forget how it completely says, but to those that are good, they, you know, they go in, and to those that are wicked, they go, you know, they're judged. Time of the dead, they should be judged. All men will be judged. And that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints. So Old Testament people were not prophets, but loved the Lord and did right. They'll get something. And then that fear thy name. Well, didn't we just see that in verse 13 and verse 11? This would be tribulation rendment people. If they did right in the tribulation period, they did what they were supposed to, they will show up in the great white throne judgment, but they will not be cast in the lake of fire. Because their names would be in the book. I can think of plenty of people who did right in the Old Testament and feared God. There was one guy, he hid what, 100 prophets of the Lord by 50. And he was fearful. He was fearful of Jezebel, he was fearful of Ahab, and he was fearful, is he Elijah or Elijah, I forget which one, showed up. Well, what do you want? Elijah had to, what do you mean Elijah, you're here? You know, if I go tell Ahab you're, you're here and you disappear and go off somewhere, oh, I'm going to be in trouble. But he loved God. Small and great. That means a little person and a big rich person. And shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Ooh. Some people's actions by destroying the earth are going to have to give an account. People who cause these nuclear accidents. These people who destroyed with bombs are going to give an account. Okay, ready for this one? I wish I, wish I knew what the theme was, but I don't. And yeah, I can't even, never watched the movie, just been told about it. And the temple of God was open in heaven. Interesting. There is a te study the temple because guess what? Well, I don't need to read my Bible, study my Bible. What you read in the Old Testament is shown in God in heaven. Okay, God gave Moses the pattern. Of the heavenly temple and they built it on the earth okay open an earth and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament there's the hidden ark there it is when you didn't read about that ark when, when Babylon came and they took everything to Nebuchadnezzar the spoons the two columns one named Boaz and one name I forget what the other no not both Jacob and they brought the spoons, and they broke the brass, and they brought the lay. Where was the Ark of the Covenant? It was raptured somehow. I don't want to even... It was taken away. And it's been safely ever since seen in God's temple. It is in the most, most holy place ever in heaven, God. There it is. And do you think Mr. Jones is going to get there on his own merit? I don't think so. Mr. Jones, Mr. Ford will not ever see this temple, will not ever see this ark unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and get saved. And one of them is a fictitious man that doesn't mean nothing. He's a lie. He's a makeup. The other one is a soul. And unless he believes Jesus Christ as a Savior, he will not see this ark. I will see the ark. The ark of his testimony. And there were lightnings. Hey, hey, can't wait. And voices. And thunderings. I can't wait. Imagine the thunder without the curse. Imagine th the thunder of God just echoing. Then again, is there echoing in heaven? And an earthquake again. And great hail like you saw in Egypt. So when these events start happening to Jews, if the Jews are being faithful to their children, like they should be, teaching them what the Old Testament says, bringing back the Torah, bringing back the law, 
when these start things start happening, if they were properly educated in the history of Israel, which they're probably not, they're going to start saying in the Hebrew language, whoa, that, this sounds awfully familiar. And then Moses and Elijah is going to pop up, and they're going to know exactly who they are, because that raiment is going to fear God like, oh boy. There is Elijah. There he is. And Moses and Elijah showed up before Christ died. Moses and Elijah are going to be definitely preaching Messiah Jesus Christ. The 144,000 are, are running around preaching. And we close when the seventh trumpet has blown. 